Shavers, Randy here with Atlas Shaven. Uh, today we're gonna do a Veterans Day shave. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last video, I'm actually a U.S. Air Force veteran myself. I was in security forces stationed in Minot, North Dakota from 2004 to 2008. And I'm from North Carolina so that was whole change of scenery and weather conditions and all that great stuff. So the watch we're going with today is going to be the G-Shock, which would be military approved. Um, time's on it wrong since daylight savings time. I do need to change the time. I'll do that later though. Um, this is a solar watch. Definitely one of my favorites. And then for the razor, we're going with the Rockwell 6S on the number number three setting. And this will be my third shave with this blade. It's the uh, Shark. You can see that right there. Did it come in clear? Clear enough? I can't see when I put my hand in front of it because it blocks the screen. Put that back on. And then for the brush, going with the Omega Boar Hair. Very nice boar hair brush. It's been soaking to soften the bristles. Nose is itching. Um, next soap. Today we're gonna do. We're gonna shave with what the puck? It's shaving soap. Um, and when I put a link to it, I, I can't remember if they still call it what the puck or something similar. Um, but it's the same soap. I don't know if they use that anymore. And then for after shave, since it's getting close to bedtime, late shave tonight, going with uh, Thayer's um, Rose Petal. Mix up some soap. So, yep, I was in the military, went in October. Everybody can always remember their entry date. Um, went in October 19th, 2004. Signed up six months before. It's one of those, I'm one of those guys that once I put, decide to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, I think some of my family probably didn't believe I was going to do it because when I was 18, if you'd asked me if I was going to join the military, I'd been like, you're crazy. Ain't no way. But I did, and my, actually my grandfather, he was in the Army Air Corps, which is why I chose Air Force, and he passed away June, I believe it was June, around June of that same year, and actually got his blessing. He didn't really want me to go in, but I really wanted to. He was a little bit older when he went in. I was 24. Um, he went in at 24, but his reason was World War II. Um, my reason is I had a two-year college degree and was just had a hard time getting a job. I moved from North Carolina to South Carolina with a buddy, hoping I would find something. Never did. So, so I decided to join, and then when I went to the recruiter, um. Because I would walk in. It wasn't me being talked into it by a recruiter or anything like that. Um, I had actually picked... Oh, check out the mustache. It's coming in nicely. Um, I had picked several jobs. Because back then you could pick your career. I'm not sure if you still can. Because um, I heard it maybe it changed a little. But anyway. I had picked... I think one of them was like something to do with radar and... It was all uh, electronic jobs because my degree was uh, electronic engineering. But 
there was a long wait to go in. And I, I think I'd already been through MEPS at that point. That's where you, they do like physical tests and stuff to make sure you're fit to be in the military. Make you do the duck walk and bend over in front of the doctor. All that good stuff. But since I wanted to go in early, he had mentioned I should go in open general. Now what I didn't know at the time is I should have went in open electrical. Maybe he can explain. <laughs> He's actually friends with me on Facebook. I found him later on. But of course he probably doesn't remember because he put so many people through. So at the time I had just gotten married. It was my first wife. Currently I'm second wife. Um, so I just gotten married and joined the service because I told her it was either we're done or we're getting married. So that's what happened. I don't know if it's the best decision in the world, but it is what it is. So it was uh, definitely strange. There were a few married people when I went in. There's a few guys I'm friends with on Facebook back then when I started. Well, here's coming out of the brush. When I had, when I went in, there was no Facebook. So I ended up finding some of these guys later. That's why I'm not friends with a ton of, ton of the people I was in service with. Probably 20. But I got tons of stories. Again, I was in security forces, but I was in missile security. So basically my job was to protect maintenance guys on a nuclear silo site where they would, where if there was a, if they needed to launch nuclear weapons, where they would launch from it's a nuclear silo underground. So we were the protection when the maintenance guys were on site. We were their protection and site protection. I remember when I first went in, I thought, man, there ain't no way because. When you're in security, there's tons of information that you have to memorize. And I thought, there ain't no way I'm gonna remember everything. Oh yeah, check this out. We're in a uh, shirt that um, bought the basic training. I don't know if you can see the back of it. It's kinda cool. And on the back is actually a drawing that a person in there, in my basic training did. I was in the 321st, which was super strict, which I'm sure they all may say that. Anyway, I was there, I don't know if you remember when the plane Again, I was missile security, so this was actually a different squadron. Um, I was there when the B-52 accidentally flew with nuclear weapons. And when they do that, the whole base is recalled. So everybody, even though there ain't nothing I could have done, because again, that was not where I worked. But you have to go in anyway and have briefings and upon briefings and... And then we also had, um, well, I was 
like I said, I was 24, and you know, people go in service when you're 18. And there were, anytime young people got busted for drinking and driving or got arrested downtown, they would also recall our whole flight in and we'd have to stand at attention for hours at a time. And you know, people would pass out, locking their knees, which you're not supposed to do. Because the way it worked, if one person got punished, everyone got punished. And see, when I was in, you actually had to iron your uniform every day. You had to shine your boots every day. Or now, the BDUs, you don't have to iron. And this was the camera pattern that was on my BDUs. They had just swapped over to the new one. Went out about halfway through, or a little bit past halfway through, maybe my last year. So actually, I didn't have to purchase the new uniform. But I can I probably tell a few little stories. One of them was <laughs> this is kind of funny because when you're brand new, you're you're always nervous. You never you know after going through basic training and then uh, security forces training. When you're in there, I mean it's super strict. And. So when I got to my base, you know, you're not used to, you know, getting, not being able to get away with more, but not, just not being a strict. Let me get this hair off the camera. I don't think you can see it. But my, my this was my first, uh, they called it um, de deploying to the field. But what it really meant was there were nuclear silos, uh, like I said, I was in Minot, North Dakota, and around the base in like a C shape, there, there's, 150 nuclear silos and I believe it was 10 10 MAFs missile alert launch facilities um, but anyway um, we had to go do change out when I first went in I was on fire teams and what they called set guard so we did four days as a fire team where you go out for four days and then uh, you were off three days you would work three days and then off two days. You were three days as a set guard, a security escort team. And then you were off two days. So my first field deployment, or the first time going, what they call going out to the field, they had just implemented, because we had Humvees, group Humvees. Um, they had just implemented, you had to have a second person when you were backing a Humvee because there's tons of blind spots. Well, when we drove out to, to do changeover, we were in, this, they, sometimes they, if they ran out of vehicles, they would give you other vehicles. Like we, and we happened to get the or um, took, or they gave us the commander's vehicle, which was usually just a little bit nicer. It was a, I think back then it was a. And we get to site, or not to site, but to the changeover location. We just meet, meet it up somewhere. And. The guy I was with, he was, I think he only had about a year left, so he was pretty lax. And we go to back out to leave, and, all, and you hear this thump. And you're like, what just happened? <laughs> we get out. And he had backed into the commander's vehicle. If you've ever seen the back of a Humvee, the bumper has these round, um, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like a round rod or whatever that protrudes out. It literally had punched a hole <laughs> in the fender of the commander's vehicle.
And you think being in the military, because when that happens, you have, they have to file reports and all that. You would think, oh, you know, you must have filed a report, told what happened. But here's the deal. You always listen to the um, fire team leader. Fire team, with the fire team, it was four people. You had two people with M4s, one with a two or three grenade launcher, and one with a machine gun. And you always listen to the fire team leader. And he was like, there was someone back there, and we backed into the vehicle anyway. So that's what we told had happened. I might do a third pass since we're telling stories. And so that's what we did. I remember being out with that. Um, this guy did not care. I mean, he was just ready to be out. Some people hated being up there. Some people hated doing um, or being a set guard. A little bit later on, I actually chose to be a set guard because you would come back home every day. And I, and we had just had a kid. So I volunteered. I didn't mind it. You work really long days, like 14 to 16 hours, but the beat having to stay out every day. Because I was at base housing. Um, but this guy, and I'm not going to name any names. He'll never see this video anyway. But this guy, I was, I was always kind of nervous when we would go out to a site when we were doing the set guard or the security escort team because Because this guy would just, he would not get out of the vehicle. Because you were supposed to get out and do patrol and stuff like that. And he would literally sleep. So I was always nervous that we were going to get caught. Because sometimes you'd have flight commander. Not normally when somebody comes through your, your area or your flight. Um, you usually knew because they'd have to call in to the dispatcher so you hear them. But there were people that didn't. and that, Those were the people you'd always get worried about. Because there were people sometimes that did get caught doing things they weren't supposed to. Like I said, two people being in a vehicle, that was one thing. And in the wintertime, it would get cold. Another thing we used to do, like I said, we were on um, nuclear sites and there was a rubber ring, There's there was a blast door on top and underneath it was the nuclear weapon. Um, and sometimes we we they we did what you were what you call campers. And if there, there's two alarms at a site and if one of them went down, we would have to be security. So, <laughs> or we would do this when um, when a maintenance team was there because it was just something to do because you were literally bored out of your mind. You know, you didn't have smartphones back then. And uh, there was a rubber ring that went around the site or went around the blast door. And we would play a game where basically you would, you know, there, there are rocks on site you would grab a rock and put it down and you would kick it to the other side and we would get points based on if you land on that rubber seal. So that was kind of funny. And you would lose even more points if you kicked it off. On one side there was always a drop off for the blast door uh, where if the blast door ever had to open it would just shoot across the field. And we you would lose points if you got it over there. So that was one of the funny things we did. I remember another time we were, they had a state fair every year and in the military you volunteer. We call it voluntold because we, because uh, they would make you do stuff. Some of it was cool. Like I did, I was a shop with a cop one time where we took, took kids that 
couldn't afford toys and you know they would buy things um but we would do security at the state fair and we did third shift one year did security and somebody comes over the radio that they heard some hear, heard a couple in the back of a I think it was the back of a pickup truck um where they heard noises coming from the back if you know what I mean and all you hear over the radio is if they're not bothering anybody leave them alone and that was probably the most exciting thing that night during security other than us playing on the radios but anyway that's a few stories a few military stories maybe I'll do this again every year I don't know I have lots of pictures. I'll post some pictures in here too of uh, maybe one of basic training. One, um, I don't have any, well, maybe I think I have one picture when I was in security forces training. I know I have some of graduation and then maybe I'll post one, one or two, um, probably one of when I was actually stationed in might not North Dakota. But anyway, hope everybody has a great Veterans Day and a great rest of the week. And happy shaving.